Good evening, good evening. How are you? You're watching the Firestarter Show. My name is Lakeisha Hines, and I'm so excited to have this power couple with me tonight. Team Jennings, Mr. Walter and Charmaine Jennings on the show this evening. The topic tonight is just right up their alley. It's all in their wheelhouse. So it would have truly been a mishap on my part if I did not invite these two to join me for this conversation that we're having tonight. How are you feeling this evening, Team Jennings? Hey, well, we are super excited to be on this show, this venue with the best hostess with the most is. <laughs> Uh, our friend, sister, and so much more. Thank you for having us, Lakeisha. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for saying yes. How are you feeling tonight, Brother Walter? I'm feeling excellent. Just really excited to be on the show. Thank you so much again for the invitation. And yeah, looking forward to having a conversation about the arts and relationships, yes. man. It's a big, it's a big deal. It's a big deal, right? But listen, here's the thing. How are you going to show up? looking better than the host i feel like i told him i said i need to go and change my outfit y'all super fly this evening super super fly thank you for showing up and dressing up and serving the people life <laughs> we only knew behind the scenes behind the scenes no glam squad over here okay we can like this front of the scenes you look like you got 25 people in the back <laughs> that helped y'all get put together so i appreciate you showing up but let's dive right into this topic tonight it, it's one that is near and dear to my heart i i didn't realize um how artsy i was when i was younger it wasn't until i became an adult that i realized that man i really am an art head right and i i i think i struggled uh for many years trying to figure out what I actually wanted to do career wise, because I was so passionate about so many different things. Dance was in my life from a very little girl. I want to say maybe three or four years old, I started dancing and music was always a part of my life. And then I enjoyed drawing and painting. I actually went to school for graphic design. Like mm -hmm. art has always been a part of my life. So, so this is one of those topics that again is very near and dear to my heart. And so the way that we are bringing art into this conversation tonight is about art and relationships. And so all three of us work with couples. All three of us actually um, believe that God has called us to pour into relationships and to pour into people. And in these relationships, I don't know, you all confirm or correct for me because I, I just need to know. But for me, in my mind, relationships, there's an art to being able to to have a healthy, successful relationship. Do you agree or do you see it from a different perspective? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I think of, you know, art, you know, is, is typically, you know, more accredited to the right hemisphere of the brain, you know, and I do believe relationships, there's an art but there's a science to it as well. Mm -hmm. Definitely both components. And um, there's that, you know, there's the steps but then there's like, you know what? There's no one smooth path to success, right? And so that's where the art comes into play, right? Sometimes it's messy. The GPS is not a straight shot. You know, you're going to go some back roads, some, you know, some different routes. So Yeah, and when we talk about art, right, we're talking about those components that are germane and unique to you all mm -hmm. as a couple. When we talk about the scientific part, there are some there are some strategies, some tools that definitely will work from couple to couple. And then there are certain things that because of the the passions that you have, because of the makeup, the interests that you all have that will naturally draw you together. So part of what we purpose to do as counselors and practitioners is to get down to what are those things that either drew you together or yeah. what are those common core values that you all have that we can at least sync you up on and then build from there. A lot of times couples, they stray away from those things yeah. and they inevitably lead to fracturing in relationships. Absolutely. 100 yeah. percent. I, I love that. And I go go ahead. Were you trying to say something, Charmaine? Yeah, I was going to say, and, and what I, it was interesting that he said that couples stray away from that. Yes. And why do we stray away from it? Because we're guilty, right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes it's because we start adulting. We yeah. start prioritizing the parent partnership, the business partnership, of, you know, paying bills and acquiring things and possessions. And sometimes we forget that, you know, as adults, we, we, we have to take care of, you know, 
of our, of ourselves individually, but also collectively. We have to stay dating, playing, enjoying ourselves as adults. Yeah, I, I love what you both said. And, and I think I'll add on to that in the sense that many times when we do enter into relationship, we oftentimes, I think, lose ourselves. You know, a lot of times we lose our identities. And one of the things that you just pointed out, Charmaine, was about when we become parents. You know, when we have to take on additional responsibilities and we're in charge for now someone else's life. And let's just keep it real. I love children. They are blessings from God, but they're takers. They are takers. And they oftentimes don't give you anything back for your service and sacrifice. (laughs) And so many times, you know, I know for me as a mom, I got wrapped up in taking care of my children and and oftentimes neglected myself because I was pouring into my children so much and you know we have something else in common in that we all three of us we have children um, with disabilities and that is a completely different layer because the needs of those children are far greater than the quote-unquote typical or average child, because you're dealing with so many different dynamics. And it's so easy, again, to neglect oneself and focus so much on the children. So getting back to the core of of who we are as individuals, I think you all have done an excellent job of making sure that you stayed true to who you are as individuals. And art has always been a part of your lives. So Um, Before we get into our topics, I think it will be very valuable for those who watch live or those who catch the replay to understand how art has played such a significant role in your lives, let's say individually and collectively, because it's really connected. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I know that, but they don't know that. So. (laughs) Yeah, Yeah, one of the things that I want to encourage anyone that's listening right is that Although we both are artists, we did not meet via art. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it's and it's important to make that distinction. You know, you see these movies and it's romanticized that two mm-hmm. people, you know, that are both artists, they come together for the, you know, it wasn't that. It wasn't until, again, we met on a more platonic kind of common ground mm-hmm. that we realized that we both had a love for art. And to be perfectly honest, I didn't realize the passion and the propensity that I had for art and the role that it would play in my life until I was in college. Like, mm. so I, like I wasn't in the band, I was in very granular activities that didn't involve a lot of art as far as on the surface. I didn't really get, didn't get into my primary art discipline, which is spoken word and poetry. I wrote when I was starting in the eighth grade, but I didn't share my work publicly until I was a senior in college. And so when we talk about, again, you know, there are a lot of closet artists Mm -hmm. and a lot of a lot of closet poets, which is what I was. And it wasn't until my senior year in college when I actually started sharing my work where I realized something's here. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, beginning to discover that. And as you mentioned, individually uncovering that it actually became another pillar that really connected Charmaine and I as Mm -hmm. far as with her being a poet as well. Her beginning to then share some of her her poetry with me and then with the world. And so we realized that it was, it was another, another a bind, another, another uh, connection point for us to really build intimacy between us. Yeah. For me, you know, and for me, I think my, my, my area in art, it definitely started with um, a mixture of music um, mm-hmm. singing at church and the youth choir I'm being very shy, I'm having a lot on my mind, but not really knowing how to say it, not knowing how to share it. And so music kind of started me out, you know, singing in the choir, hearing music at church, enjoying different music and sounds and things, lo- loving how people express themselves through music and song. And but then for me, when my teenage years hit between 13 and 16, I started feeling the weight of the world, the weight of my emotions. I mean, and they became so heavy, I became depressed. Mm-hmm. Un, um, un, you know, unknown to my parents, I started, you know, writing in my journal and my poetry, and I didn't realize it was poetry, but it was, and it was very dark and it was, it was um, not good. 
it wasn't going in a great place. So for me, you know, I think my writing and my poetry, when I started getting all of those emotions out, the weight of the weight of the world, when you have a very empathetic children, children who have big hearts, you got to watch them and pay attention to them between the ages, especially of 11 and like 15. Those mm -hmm. are some critical years because they hear everything and they're processing and gathering information and it it makes them sad especially mm -hmm. if they, don't feel like they can control it and so for me i started to get it out but it was very heavy and thank goodness for my parents they affirmed me that they loved me cared about me and so i was able to now start writing that i could be a positive contribution in in the world because my writing was like i was writing myself out yeah. of the conversation and mm. so became a way to save my life, a way for me to really reconcile those emotions and to rechannel them into something that could blossom into something a little, a lot better. Yeah. So I know that you had your own individual journeys, which you just shared and, and thank you with, with poetry and Charmaine, you did have a musical background and you and I shared that together for many years, but talk to everybody talk to the people about how you have used art in your own relationship so i will again because i believe in just being very honest <laughs> and forthright when it comes to relationships when it comes to marriage it has not been an easy road a lot of people again they see us with our artistry now and that oh you guys are such a great team and you you do so well together we have poems and performances that we do it, it was a long time coming and i will readily admit that a lot of the block lie with me and yes, it was, Lord. yeah yes, it, a, lot of, Amen. a lot of the challenge lie yes, with me yes, because Lord. because of the fact though again <laughs> I, I I I receive good wise counsel that you know it's it's important not to mix business and family mm -hmm. and pat, you know it, because again you already have a dynamic where you're trying to navigate a relationship you're trying mm -hmm. to navigate marriage mm -hmm. and the more responsibility you add to that yes. the more weight it puts on the on the relationship so well, it's, it's not you got to exactly now mm -hmm. it's something else that you've got to manage and because both of us were not only artists but we were good artists mm -hmm. uh we were a part of the of the poetry and spoken word the contemporary poetry and spoken word scene in tampa and helping mm -hmm. build it up to what it is now and not saying that bragging but just being very honest from a mm -hmm. historical standpoint you mm -hmm. know those types of things as far as the attention the you know again trying to maintain our individual artistry while also supporting one another collectively as well, there was a balance to it, mm -hmm. you know, while also yeah. trying to balance a home. And so I was very reluctant to do projects with Charmaine for us to do things together. And so it was a, it was a long time coming for me. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't until we got, a, got some years under our belt and I really began to understand that as a couple, God brought us together to nourish one another. And there was also a collective benefit by us working together. Mm -hmm. And so we've been able to launch a lot of different projects. We did a we did a project called Mouth of the Mural, which yeah. was really exciting and highlighting a lot of the visual <laughs> artists and murals around the city mm -hmm. and also incorporating other spoken word artists into that. We're all about we're all about community. And so for us, art is not our core value creativity is yes. mm -hmm. and so you know we're really we're really big proponents in helping couples to identify what are your core values what yes. is your relationship your marriage what is it going to be built upon and so for us creativity mm -hmm. is a very big is a very big uh principle for us within our marriage and in our relationship and art is one of the conduits through which it is expressed and so now, again, that we've gotten some years under our belt with our marriage, we're able to really go into the various projects where we can work together to really build something collectively. Yeah, I have to add that we got married really young. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> so we were still developing our individual like, yes. uniquenesses and identity. I that. Mm -hmm. So it's very different when you are in your early 20s and like you were literally growing up together. Mm -hmm. And so while I understand, I understand absolutely what Walter, that wisdom that was given to him, it might've seemed like a detriment, but to be truthfully honest, I think that we needed those years to mature. We needed to be able to have a solid partnerships and parenting and 
be learning how to pay bills and learning how to purchase cars and buy insurance. And we needed those things to be able to really build that partnership. And so, you know, but I, I love the fact that he says creativity. That is the focus when we work with couples, because mm -hmm. you might be you might love, you know, DIY, you know, do it yourself, you know, jobs and putting the crown molding around your house. That's mm -hmm. an art for you. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> redesigning the bedroom, that's art, interior design. Right. Right? So we sometimes limit art to performing Absolutely. art. Right. Right? But it is creativity that we want that to, to resonate to the world. That Because we do have couples that says, well, I'm not creative. Oh, mm -hmm. yes, you are. Mm -hmm. That yes, you, you are. are. Even yes. if you have those a, three ingredients that were in the refrigerator and you made a gourmet meal out of it, you're an artist. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. You might be a financial genius. You will literally, you know, make a dollar out of 15 cents. You know, <laughs> that's art. That's creativity. Right. And so with those things that every couple has that that power and it can really not only heal you individually, but coming together. Yeah. It is almost that thing that it's almost one of the uh, great gifts that you can model for your children, that there is some creativity inside of them as well that has been gifted to them. Mm -hmm. That when sometimes, you know, things occurring and, and you just need time to relax, to heal, to unwind, channel that thing, that gift that you were given. And, you know, it's meant to heal you and help you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I am. Um... You know, my husband and I, we, you all know this, but we co-facilitate a support group together with, with um, our nonprofit organization, Support for Caregivers. And one of the parents who came through there actually was an art teacher. And when she had her son who had a lot of healthcare issues, um, art kind of fell by the wayside because life took over, parenting took over, which is exactly what we were talking about at the top of the show. And you know, we really were encouraging her to get back to her art. We said, listen, even if you're just sketching, if even if you just get a book and you just do some light sketches, that art is in you. It's a part of you. It's who you are. It's what you do. It's like it's all oozing out of your pores, how creative you are. And you got to get back to that, even if it's just for 10 minutes. And so slowly but surely, she started working her way back. And now she's teaching classes again. She's doing, I mean, I mean, it's insane. And so to the point now where she's the illustrator of our new book. So I mean, oh, like, art has been back in her life for quite some time now. And you can just see it like there's this calm and this peace that came over her when she got back to her art because again that was part of who she was and it was something that she needed it was like um air to her yes. and yeah. so she needed to get back to that um and she used it as you said both of you have channeled a lot of what's been going on with you you know into your poetry into your work and at one point when i was dibbling and dabbling it was an outlet for me as well so sometimes it is not just about you being um creative or you being someone who was born with these artistic genes but literally it can be a lifesaver to your point charmaine and it literally can um help you to ground yourself and to get focused it can help you get centered and just take your mind off of everything else that's going on around you that you can't change so we're going to get into some things that you can do with your partner or your spouse uh, to incorporate art into your relationship, to bring you guys close, to help strengthen your bond and get a little spice going in the bedroom too. But we're going to take a quick break. I don't want you to swipe left or right. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. You're watching the Firestarter Show. Do you or someone you know have a child with special needs or as we like to call them, special abilities? If yes, please listen up. SNC 101 is here to the rescue. SNC 101 or Special Needs Community 101 is a welcome to the world of disabilities. This program assists new and veteran caregivers of children with special needs to overcome challenges they face on a daily basis. It will ignite the fire within and help you get back to you. You will get three three-hour group sessions, three support messages, and a welcome packet with program materials. Topics to be discussed 
discuss are understanding, accepting, and navigating the diagnosis, self-care, maintaining healthy relationships, and so much more. You do not want to miss this boot camp. As a caregiver, you truly are a warrior. You're a fighter. So use the QR code below to register today, soldiers. See you soon. Hey, welcome back. Welcome back to the Firestarter Show. Again, my name is Lakeisha Hines, and I'm joined here with Walter and Charmaine Jennings, who are powerhouses in the art, spoken word, in counseling. There's nothing these people cannot do. I am so happy that I am able to be connected with them and to bask in their glory. Um, thank you all for being here again. So we're going to dive into some tips, some strategies, some things that you all can do to bring art into your relationship and help it to build bonds between you, bring you closer together and have fun. And I even said, to bring some spice in that bedroom. So the first thing we're going to do, we can look at art together. Mm -hmm. This is something that I absolutely love. You don't even have to go anywhere. Honestly, if you want to look at art, you literally can Google things online. I mean, there's so many different things that you can do. Magazines, books from the library, if you want, things that you can download. There's always ways to find art. But my favorite is going to museums to look at art. Um, my husband and I did that recently. There's a Dolly Museum in St. Petersburg, which is close to where the three of us live. And it was such a good time, even though that's not his type of art. <laughs> he did it with me because he knew it was something that I was passionate about. And I think, you know, in relationships at times, we got to compromise, right? There's some things that he wants to do that I don't necessarily want to do, but I go ahead and I do it because we're trying to, again, spend time together, bond, strengthen our relationship and respect each other's um, interests, mm -hmm. right? So I love going to look at art together at museums. What about the two of you? Yeah, absolutely. So obviously, as you mentioned, because we live in Florida, you know, art is all around us, not mm -hmm. just with the museums. But one of the things that we love doing is even going for walks, looking at the architecture of homes. And my wife constantly daydreaming about <laughs> this house and that house, and, you know, and those. But even those things, you know, can can provide an opportunity for a conversation. Again, it's an opportunity to have that exploratory and, and emotional intimacy. And so absolutely, we, um, as a matter of fact, we just came a few weeks ago, we went to the Chihuly um, Museum, which is the, the glass Ooh. art, which uh, is, yes. and as you mentioned, Keisha, it's not, art isn't just about the product, yes. it's also about the process. Yes. And so, you know, yes. it's, so, it's so great being able to see the process behind these beautiful products mm -hmm. yes. that are made because obviously too it's indicative of you know relationships as well there's a lot of symmetry there yes. and i'm yeah. being more like documentaries and things of that nature because i'm always interested in the how did they get here right. how did you know what's the story <laughs> behind yeah what's the story behind what we see mm -hmm. and so it allows opportunity for for us to be able to explore that together and as you mentioned what art does is it allows you to, to really bond together when it comes to, I may be interested in the story and the process, Charmaine may be interested in the person and the, and the mentality mm -hmm. and their mind, mindset behind doing what they did. So it becomes this great common ground for us to really have dialogue and discussion from two different perspectives about the same thing. I mean, and we yes. would see a glass blowing mm -hmm. demonstration and how they make it. And just, I mean, learning together, right? Mm -hmm. you know, learning together, learning something new, exploring something new. So it was just amazing um, to, to have that experience. Mm -hmm. And I may, you know, I may be jumping the gun, but you're talking about spicing up the bedroom. <laughs> it, it is being around that type of creativity, to be honest. Yeah. But, you know, even if you're not an artist, you know, with your hands and you're not good with your hands, you know, there's been times where I have really enjoyed working with couples and it, and it really encouraging them to see each other's bodies as a work of art mm -hmm. and to, to, you know, to touch, to feel, to really just embody and encourage that. And so, you know, mm -hmm. we like yeah. we like the glow in the dark paint. I, 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 hold on, pause, pause. Don't give away, don't go oh, out, don't give all oh, the secrets. Oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. 
So I wanted to touch on the the art around you because you all mentioned something that you did with your Mouth of the Mural series. You took an entire year and just went all around our community Mm -hmm. and highlighted art that was there by various artists. There were poems created uh, created around that art. And then you got to get some history uh, yes. also of, of your own community, which, again, was to me phenomenal, which is why I said art's just oozing out of your pores. Mm-hmm. Um, but admiring the art around you, again, it's not about what other people have coined or deemed art, mm-hmm. right? Because sometimes it literally is just the way the sun hits the trees when you get up mm-hmm. in the morning that art so we don't have to have like it's it doesn't have to fit in a box in other Mm -hmm. words art can be whatever we define it as right so I love the fact that you talked about the glass blowing and shout out to my cousin man who actually paints glass Mm -hmm. and started doing this like in his 50s so I know I know that this is something that happens because you know that's the 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 psychology geek in me that knows about developmental stages and when we move into that transition from like middle to late adulthood is when our creative juices really begin to flow and that's when most people start picking up an instrument or they start painting or all their creativity comes out and he started painting glass and I mean the work is beautiful so shout out to my cousin Willie White my cousin man paint glass uh maker (laughs) he's done a phenomenal job with that so you were tapping into one of our next points my sister and it was about painting together so now we're Mm -hmm. gonna dig real real deep on this one because painting together can mean so many different things typically when you think about painting together you think about sipping paint you know everybody's doing sipping paint now and that's cute for a wonderful date night, it's fun. But if you're one who doesn't draw, <laughs> it can be very stressful for you, which is why they have the alcohol for those who partake. Hey, you <laughs> sit there way more than you paint. Okay? <laughs> exactly. But it can be a fun date night, right? To, to do yeah. a different paint, to paint together. And I've done that. And I think it's cool. Like, I, I do enjoy that. But I like to paint. For someone who doesn't, this may not be their jam. But so also you guys went to a museum and you saw the glass and how that was done. But like I said, my cousin paints glass. So you literally can get your own glass. You can purchase your own pottery type items and you can paint them. That's something that you can do. And now you can go ahead and chime in with the third type of painting that you can do when we talk about painting together, because there are many different canvases. So which canvas were you referring to? So, you know, we're referring to, yes, our bodies as canvases, you know, and when we look in the mirror every day, sometimes we do not take the time to acknowledge how this canvas is evolving, right? Yeah. And, and, and it, even when we acknowledge it, sometimes we're not as positive as we need to be about really respecting what our canvases have gone through, True. right? And True. so as a couple, it really serves as an opportunity for us to look at each other's body as a canvas to acknowledge yes. every curve crest every every aspect of it and to really just to touch it to caress it to, to buy some paint brushes turn the lights off if you yep. want um we we love being able to turn the lights off turn on some black lights and mm-hmm. get some glow in the dark paint some beautiful some wonderful soft tip brushes yep. and really being able to design what it is that you see if i see a warrior and my husband i can i can i can paint him his yep. warrior suit his breastplate and all of these different things right um i can write him a, a message right on his chest where i've laid my head down for years right so you can make this canvas, whatever you like, right? And he can acknowledge my body for what it has either contributed to his life, to his children, whatever. But it really helps me to see how he endears me, right? Yep. Through his eyes and vice versa. Because sometimes I don't even, I haven't always appreciated my my own canvas. Mm-hmm. So he can really motivate me and, and the beauty and what he sees. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. I, and I, I love it. I'm telling you that that painting each other can be 
such an erotic thing that you all can do together. It can be very stimulating. It could be your foreplay or it could just be we're just playing without the intent of anything in the end. So I, I love that. Done that. Been there. If you haven't, I don't know what you're doing with your life. You need to try it. Amazon, so, <laughs> Amazon has everything. Everything. One of the things that you pointed out, Walter, was about watching documentaries. And I enjoy that, too. I love watching documentaries about the different phases of arts and time periods, like the Renaissance period and how art was changing um, mm -hmm. from modern art to the different styles of art. And I think um, I'm really into that. So that may not be for everybody, but to learn about the different genres, I think... Um, you're learning together and it helps you in your own creative exploration when you understand the different types of art. So I love doing that together. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, Go you ahead. No, 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 no. And you mentioned, and you mentioned Dolly earlier. Mm -hmm. And yeah. so Dolly is one of those artists, right? Well, when you look at his work, it is so vivid and it's so relevant. You forget that it's some of it is 60, 70 years old. So because, racism. you know, so you can only imagine the criticism and the mm -hmm. critique that he that he probably undertook during those times. My mother's one of those people that thought Dolly was was demon possessed. Oh, like, yes. Oh, yes. Because, oh, yeah. Yeah. Work, right. You know, he, he's considered <laughs> a realist. So it's you know, it's very it's, it's very spiritual in a way. Mm -hmm. but, yes. You know, and so it, it can it can be a bit disturbing, but you know it does challenge your perspective. And so, yeah, I think it's really important. You know, again, as you study that, because when history and times change, it usually is uncomfortable. Change, especially when it is when you're yes. talking about the shifting of art forms and what's acceptable and what's not acceptable. A lot of things are not accepted when they're first introduced. Mm -hmm. And so, Thanks. when you look at somebody like Dolly having a museum now, you know. Years ago, I'm pretty sure the individuals when he first started introducing his work would not deem him as an individual that was worthy of even having his work reflected in that way. No, Dolly was coined as a weirdo. Like he yeah. was weird. Nobody wanted to hang out with him. Nobody wants to talk to him. Keep your kids away from Dolly. Don't <laughs> let your kids play with Dolly. He's weird. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and as believers, you know, a lot of his work is dark and it does look yeah. demonic. It does mm -hmm. look like you know, again, but he painted what he dreamt about. Mm -hmm. And many times our dreams, they can be very dark, right? But mm -hmm. I love the fact that he was unapologetic mm -hmm. in what it is that he put out there. And surrealism was a movement and the people were not ready. And mm -hmm. as you said, most of the the more innovative things, the new things that are coming out, think about Neo Soul, people weren't ready. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't know what to call it. There was no right. name for it. So every time, I will say most times when something is new to your point, it is often not welcomed mm -hmm. because it's different. And we don't like things to be different because it makes us uncomfortable, and especially if we can't define it. But everything doesn't need to be defined. And to me, the things that have made the most impact and that have actually touched me the deepest didn't have a label at first, right? It was something that kind of grew and evolved into into something else. So I love Dolly. I love Frida Kahlo. She was another one that was very um, weird, according to the people. And it was a lot of dark things because she dealt with death. And so a lot of her artwork was surrounding death and dying because she had umpteen thousand miscarriages. So mm -hmm. she would paint about all of her babies that she lost. And it evoked sadness. And people don't want to sit in pain. We want to hop around it, jump over it. We just want, oh, no, I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to look at that. But when you look at her art, it forces you to have to go into those dark spaces. And to me, that is what makes it art. Mm -hmm. So um, this next point was about sculptures or pottery. And it's right in alignment because Dolly did some sculptures himself. Um, Frida Kahlo did some sculptures also. So there are a lot of artists who have done that. You can actually do that, right? We can take a pottery class together and we can make different types of art together. So that's something else that you can do. And I think the last thing that we didn't talk about, we talked about music, but we didn't talk about making music together. Yeah. So we actually can do that. Um, you know, and it doesn't have to be as as formal as going into a studio, you making a beat and I'm dropping lyrics. I mean, that's one way to do it. But 
honestly, my husband here around the house just being silly because he used to play drums. <laughs> he might come up with a beat and I'll come up with something and we're just joking, playing around the house. So we make music together all the time. But really what it comes down to is you finding things that you can do together yes. where you enjoy each other it's fun you're interested you're learning something it brings you closer together and creating new memories and new experiences together and art can definitely be a catalyst to help um strengthen your relationship and again increase your bond together so i just want to say thank you all so much again for joining um i thoroughly enjoyed this conversation with the two of you and please share with the people what you have upcoming and how they can get in contact with you. Sure. Absolutely. You can always reach out to us at chosen life specialist.org. Um, as far as our next event that we actually have coming up, we will be participating in an event called poetic joy, which is a part of the healing while black conference that will be taking place over in St. Petersburg, Florida. I believe that's July the 5th through July the 9th. And so Poetic Joy is going to take place on Thursday, July the 6th from 7 until 10 p.m. at the studio at 620 in St. Petersburg. So for more information, you can visit HealingWhileBlack.com. All right. Any closing thoughts for the people? No, just, you know, if you want to continue to keep uh, that creative edge in your relationship, remove right and wrong. There is no wrong in art being creative and just make sure you keep those lines of vulnerability open and creating that space um, where each of you both can be just free to flow, free to be, and um, just accept one another as you're navigating new experiences with each other. And so, yeah, visit us at chosenlifespecialist.com. All right. Well, as always, if you are in need of a fire starter, you know all you have to do is schedule a heat call. I am here for you. Call or text 727-213-8247. And make sure that you are tuning in every Thursday night, 7 p.m., where we're talking about sex, parenting, arts, relationships, and kingdom business. All right, you guys. Have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining. And we will see you next week. 